This is a GCSE video on the electromagnetic spectrum. White light isn't just pure white light. It is made up of lots of different coloured light. And if you've ever shone a light through a prism like this, you'll see that it separates out into lots of different colours. Red at the top, violet at the bottom, and the other colours of the rainbow in between. The same thing happens in a rainstorm. The sunlight is refracted through raindrops and you get a rainbow. And when this happens, the reason this happens is because the light changes speed as it goes through here and red has the least energy. Red has the lowest energy of all visible light and red has the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency. We use lambda for wavelength and the lowest frequency, F for frequency. Violet has a short wavelength and a high frequency. So the light is separated, it is split up into its different colours. We call this dispersion. The light is dispersed into different colours according to their wavelength and their frequency. But light, white light and visible light, aren't the only things that we can split. So if we could see more types of light, we would be able to split types of light into even more different sections. And the whole thing altogether is called the electromagnetic spectrum, because all of those types of colours of light and all the types of light and all the types of waves that I'm about to talk about are called electromagnetic waves. And the visible light is only a very small section of that. Now sometimes you can see light that is just outside of the visible light spectrum because it slows down in some way and the one that is more commonly seen is ultraviolet light. You see that when you go um, somewhere with a black light and white things shine really brightly. That's because the ultraviolet light is reflecting, slowing down slightly until it turns into visible light. So ultraviolet light is just next to visible light. Next to ultraviolet light is something else that we use, this time in medicine, which is x-rays. And next to x-rays, there are something called gamma rays. On the other side, on the red side, there is something else which is sometimes used, um, particularly in the military, uh, night vision goggles, infrared. Uh, infrared is uh, given off by hot things and from your... Um, from your thermal physics unit, you should know that infrared radiation is a type of radiation that is emitted and absorbed by different things. Black things emit it much better than shiny silver things, for example. Next to infrared, we have microwaves, which you also might know about. Microwaves. Sometimes we use those for cooking. And next to microwaves, we have radio waves. And obviously radio waves we use to listen to things on the radio and for communication. So we have seven different things in our electromagnetic spectrum. Every single one of these, including visible light, is an electromagnetic wave. Visible light has the red side here and the violet side. I don't have a violet pen, so I'm going to use a blue pen, but the violet side there. So you can see that visible light is only a tiny little section of the entire range of electromagnetic waves, and yet it's the only one that we can see. So what do we use the other ones for? Well, gamma rays, we use those for um, something called radiotherapy, which is uh, how we um, kill cancer cells. So we use it for cancer treatment. X-rays as you probably know, are used for medical imaging. They take a picture using x-rays of your body and you can see your bones, so you know if they're broken. 
ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light um, is used for a lot of different things, but ultraviolet light um, damages our skin. We get sun cream that protects against ultraviolet. It also kills bacteria, so it's sometimes used for sterilizing equipment like medical equipment. Infrared light, we've already talked about. Infrared is used for night vision. Um, but also, it's just used for cooking things. Infrared radiation is heat, and so it's used for cooking things. Um, microwaves, you also know, is used for cooking. You get a microwave oven, but also you can use microwaves in communications. Microwaves is how your mobile phone works. So communications for your mobile phone. Um, radio waves we also use for communication. Um, things like the radio and also walkie-talkies use radio waves. So we've got uses for all of them. Obviously visible light we use to see things, but all the other ones have uses for various different things. Now how can they possibly be so different? If they're all electromagnetic waves, the only difference is their wavelength and frequency, how can they be so different? Well their wavelength and frequency are very different. So gamma rays the wavelength of a typical gamma ray is about 10 to the minus 11 or more, or smaller, so that's very, 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 very tiny. That is um, 0 0.000000001, which is 11 zeros before that one. Um, so the wavelength of gamma rays is very small, and their frequency is very high. It can be up to about 10 to the 20, or maybe even higher. Okay, so 10 to the 20 is a 1 with 20 zeros after it. So that's very, very high. And that's the num remember, frequency is the number of waves per second. So that's a lot of waves traveling fast right past you. So that's 10 with 20 zeros times per second. All the way to the other end, a radio wave, the wavelength of a radio wave can be up to 1,000 or even up to 10,000 meters. So that's a really, really long distance just for one wave. Frequency of a typical radio wave can be up to around just 10 to the 4, which is about 10,000. So 10,000 um, waves per second compared with one with 20 zeros waves per second. So you can see that despite the fact that the only things that are different are the wavelength and the frequency, there are some really big differences in the wavelength and the frequency. So that is why they have such different properties, and that is why we use them for lots of different things. Now the other thing that you need to know about with the electromagnetic spectrum is safety, because gamma rays, x-rays, and UV light are all ionizing. Now ionizing... means that they damage our cells. Ionizing means that they can, the, the waves come in and they interact with the atoms of our cells and our DNA and they can damage the cells in that way. The more this way we go, the higher the frequency, the more ionizing things get. So gamma rays are more ionizing than X-rays, X-rays are more ionizing than UV, and UV is more ionizing than visible light. So we know that we have to protect against UV. UV ultraviolet comes from the sun, and we know we wear sun cream to protect against that. X-rays, you, you don't get exposed to very many X-rays when, when you go for an X-ray at the, at the hospital, but even so, the doctor still stands behind a, a special screen, and that's to protect him from the X-rays because he does a few hundred every day. And if he stood in the X-ray, he would have his cells damaged, and that could lead to cancer. Gamma rays are even more hazardous, they are even more ionizing, and so they're only used in very specific ways. Gamma rays are a type of radiation, and they can damage your cells and give you cancer, so you have to be very, very careful with gamma rays. Now, the other thing that you need to remember about electromagnetic waves is that they all travel at the same speed in a vacuum. 
Um, so the speed that they travel in a vacuum is approximately three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So that's three with eight zeros after it, meters per second. And all of these waves travel at exactly the same speed. Now, a good way of remembering all of this, a good way of remembering the order of these and their uses is to watch the video that there is a link for in the description below.